Starting to the top right. And yeah, so we have the monster, the new addition for the Axiom Acer roster. It is in blue. Acer Innovation. One of the sickest team pickups this year. Great for Acer. Starting to the bottom left, we have his opponent, a former champion. And he won against MC. This is for Team FX Open. FXO Seed. He's on the grass side, as is appropriate for his ID. Kind of hard to grow a seed on the other side. As you can see, it's a little more barren over here. And guys, while we're having the early game just unfolding in front of us, you could actually do, do us a personal favor. Every time we're coming into the studio, we are trolling around a little bit with the staff here. And uh, if you are currently having like one or two minutes uh, with your hands, then just jump on Twitter and uh, send a tweet to TSL underscore Karam and just ask him, friendly like, why are you so handsome? Yeah, that's K-A-R-A-M for Karam. Yeah, TSL underscore Karam. Just ask him why he's so devilishly handsome. Yeah, ask he him why he's so handsome and uh, he he might have a good response. He might have a good response there, the more tweets he gets the better. He's by the way the uh, admin of the uh, GSL and GSTL, so he's one of the former coaches for Team TSL and one of the nicest guys that we have here. He'll definitely understand, but that would, yeah, that would be uh, really nice. That would be really <laughs> nice. You can also follow two of us on Twitter at ProxWolf and at Kelder. That would be nice too. <laughs> Make that happen as well. And let's see uh, what innovation can make happen in this game, or what C is able to do here. I feel this is this uh, this is for me the game that kind of makes this team match now. Yeah, a it's a little bit weird to say if you uh, think about FX. Uh, sorry, um, Axiom is already being ahead with the 2-0, but I feel if C now takes down innovation and gains a little bit of momentum, he certainly could turn things around for his team. But if Innovation breaks the then I don't think there is any chance that FXO is taking it today. You know, if you beat Innovation and you go against another Terran player afterwards, you can at least, uh, well, I beat Innovation first, so this guy that I'm up against is not uh, not going to scare me quite so much. Here comes the Reaper into the main base, wants to get some good scouting. We'll see uh, pretty much everything, but we'll actually have to get out of there. You can kill a probe, but it's not worth it. Yeah, you need to get out of there. Uh, so far good control by Cedar as well, just pulling that probe back just in the nick of time, making sure that there is no additional harvester kill. But the scouting information, that's what he is definitely getting out of this, without a problem at all. Trying to move in again to take down that probe. Yep, could go for the probe here, targets it down, wants to all see the third pylon. Oh! And he's gonna get the probe it looks like. Oh! Not quite. Not quite, but he's losing, he's forcing some lost mine time and I think... One more shot, there he goes, yeah. he does get it. Nicely done, really nice control here that for Innovation. That Mothership Core definitely gets an effort defense. Yeah. That was like, no, that was, they're not even putting an effort in. That was, uh, that was, uh, the Mothership Core needs to work out his thrusters. Looking a little bit slow there. I mean, that Mothership Core doesn't even lift. No, certainly not. Got to talk to the Phoenixes for that. They might be able to teach him. Yeah, it's quite possible. Maybe yeah, upgrade at the Fleet Beacon one day. There is the robotics going down. The probe to the top left looked ominous, like he was considering putting down a, a quick Stargate up there. But I think once the Reaper was there, he knew, okay, this isn't going to work out. He, he may have just been planning on leaving it there for later, but if he had considered it once the Reaper was in this base and saw the pylons, he, couldn't, he just couldn't make it work anymore. Aggressive move coming out here by Innovation. He wants to force out that Mothership Core to use its overcharge right away. And we have the Reaper jumping back, or trying to jump back into the main base, maybe even able to do a bit more damage. Baiting that Mothership Core a bit to the side, here come those Marines. Now let's see. But if he gets oh! the Mothership Core before he uses the Overcharge, that could be a disaster. Such patience from Seed though, he doesn't even waste it. Yeah, trying to bait the Marines in a little bit more. That's what he usually see, just to make sure that a few of the Marines go down. And Seed really not using that energy here, so yeah. well done. That was incredible by Seed. That was a great moment where not only did he micro his Mothership Core really well, but he hesitated on using that overcharge, which is really, really nice, because if he gets another Stalker out and he controls well, he might even be able to trap those Marines. Back up at the top left, that ominous pylon actually did get built, and he's getting a Twilight Council. I think we could see Blink here on this map. Add in the gates. 
We could see Blink could also be a DT build that he's using here. Usually hiding the Twilight Council, of course, makes it a little bit easier for you to go into a Dark Templar build. But still, if you are just trying to hide that you're going into Blink Stalkers, that's something that you can always pull off. We already have the Warp Prism here. Yeah, with the Warp Prism and the Forge going down, it's definitely going to be DTs. There goes the Reaper falls down. It makes a little bit more sense just like to go for that. And here we have the probe already just being ready here and it's Dark Shrine time. Yep. Very rarely do you see that the Twilight Council is really being hit just to get the blink out there without your opponent knowing. But this is a good position now for C to actually try to just surprise innovation a little bit with those Dark Templars. Yeah. Unfortunately for him though, as his observer just saw, there's already a missile turret at the front. That's what the Warp Prism is for though. He's going to warp DTs in before and then drop them into the main. By the way, we have to correct it. The, it here, the account that we were talking about earlier is actually not TS, um, it's actually TSL ROM. Oh yeah, that's he right. He must have changed it at some point. I could have sworn that he was like underscore Karam at Maybe some point. Maybe Or oh, that is just the name. But the, the Twitter account that we we're talking about for the admin that is working here, the former TSL code, is TSL ROM. R-A-M. Maybe he's uh, thinking about random access memory. Maybe he really likes that new uh, <laughs> Daft Punk CD, or maybe he just likes RAM. Maybe he's a RAM in his Zodiac. I don't know. Well, what we definitely know is that that pylon was already spotted. The Marina did not only find a pylon, but that also gives Innovation a little bit of an inkling what might be going on here. So right now he's moving out with a lot of damage potential. Seed knows that. No DTs in the game just yet. Does he really have it, though, what it takes to throw this army back? I feel he does, but the double drop, that could do a ton of damage. And he never got that Warp Prism out, so... DTs here are probably going to be more defensively oriented than aggressively right now, especially since that pylon is spotted. Great drop defense here, though. And Seed just is pushing things back one after another. He could even kill some of these Marines because combat shields are not done. Ah, he doesn't take the opportunity. Could get these. Did Innovation... Yeah, Innovation with the Missile Turret and everything that he has is in a position where he definitely is set up for the DTs without a problem at all. So I feel that at this point, even though Innovation's attack didn't work, he still has Seed's number here. Yeah, uh, a little bit strange to me that he didn't try to go for the Marines. A little bit of an attack that we had there, the natural at the bottom right, the double drop was trying to go in again. The Twilight Council already has been revealed. Yep, Twilight Council revealed. Nothing nothing really great going on here for Innovation though. He hasn't been able to do any damage with all of the medivacs he's committed to. And also he's losing Marines left and right all over the map. It's not worth it to scan in most of these cases to kill the DT if he doesn't have enough Marines. So, you know, he's going into a Ghost Academy now. With the Twilight Counts that we have in the game, the one thing that he assumes is that he's going to run into High Templars. And that is not really going to be the case. There's no Templar Archive. Instead, Seed is just completely switching it up and is going into the Colossi tag. And so far, Innovation doesn't, isn't really able to use this, but taking out the Twilight Council is a huge deal because now the two to upgrades won't be available to Seed either. Yeah, I still really like Seed's position. Losing the Dark Shrine is really annoying for him too, but with the lack of Vikings, this third base is basically going to be for free. There's no way that Innovation could take it down unless Seed is just not paying attention to where his opponent's army is. And with all the DTs and observers on the map, he should be able to spot any move outs coming in and get his Colossi ready. And you know, it, the missing the plus two armor is really important, like you said, but at least he can still get the plus one attack right now, so it's not the end of the world. He knows about the Colossi numbers now, he knows that there are at least two out in the game. He produces his, his uh, medivax at this point, so. and we have Seed actually switching it up now, heading into the Templar Archive, but we have the SV pull, and at this point, there are not too many Colossi, that's two Colossi that he has. I don't think he even has range, I'm not 100% sure about that. He does, he does have range, but he needs to get good force fields here. Overcharge is used. And he is just moving in, he's going for it, and those two uh, Colossi are a little exposed, but the force fields are good. The problem is the main base is suddenly wide open. The main base is wide open, he cannot get onto those Colossi, though he doesn't have a lot of Marauders, and the Marines are dropping like crazy. It looks like Innovation may still have enough beautiful force fields again, even the Immortal fighting for his life here. The base is gone, the Nexus goes down, and suddenly the Marauders are trying to flank those Colossi, taking down their first one already, or do they? They're moving in, the rest of the army is already on the move, and suddenly the seed drops and supply goes down to 50, gets 100. GG! Innovation, three games in a row, and it looks like he might not be able to break through the force fields, but with that flank with the Marauders, he just barely, he just barely gets through. He is making it look easy today. 3-0.
nobody's stopping him. Innovation is going all FX who and takes out three in a row, brings FX open to the last player. He's calling him Epic, so see you later. This Bring is getting player. It's getting crazy, and Shoya is not looking happy. A lot of people have been, uh, have been hoping for innovation, just showing his skills here and performing an all-kill for his team. But this is getting a little bit silly right now. FX Open needs seven answer. They have high plans for this season. Joya, what is he going to do? Who is he Lino? Is he going to be Gumiho? Who is going to be the last player for the team? I can tell you what, there's one person who is not looking forward to innovation doing that well, and that is Joya. He had three players to take him out, two backup plans, and everything has gone to hell here. And now I think, I actually think it has to be Gumiho and not Lino. I think they have to rely on Gumiho here because Lino, can he, he fight this many Terrans? I think they're gonna. I think they're going to side in favor of Lino here. I mean, right now, I do not think that it is the right choice. Oh, yeah, that's that's definitely like, true. Whoever comes out now, not only going up against Innovation, but then going in the entire rest of the team. Vax Mesa, amazing position to be in. You look at the game and you're like, okay, probably Innovation takes it out anyways. But let's talk about what happens if he doesn't. And then you just prepare all the maps, all the players, you prepare the order as soon as you know who's going to be the last uh, player for your opposing team. You have the map choices, you can already prepare the strategies, you can be like, okay, you cheese, you go for the macro game. They can uh, develop an entire strategy around the next player that's been sent out. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think really the choice comes down to, <coughs> excuse me, which player is feeling better today? I kind of feel that it's going to be a Lino just because in the past he was always the go-to guy. Uh, Gumiho was someone that, especially in 2012, we've seen a lot, make a lot of good plays. Taking down Slayers, for example, in the final single-handedly, not even giving Lino a chance to play here. But what I've seen from Lino so far in the last season did not impress me as much as I would say, okay, like, he is to be the one. Yeah. But it depends who's going to feel who's feeling better these days the team as you yeah right I didn't that. talk to Gumiho today I did talk to Lino he was in a good mood you know yeah. you saw him as well and so I could see him coming out it just he's got to be in the right mindset whoever is sitting down and saying I can take out four players I'm feeling great is the one you want not the one who said maybe I can do it I think I might be able to take a few of them out and again this is not just about winning this match but it's about the indicator as well you never want to get all killed and go 0-4 exactly so even if it's not only about like winning it at least giving uh, the team a few wins would already help yeah. a lot. So that's something that you definitely want to do here. But you could see on the bench when we had those shots that Choya was not looking happy at all. He pictured this to go very differently. And I'm very convinced that SC was actually a snipe for innovation. That SC was sent out being the second player because they were like, okay, you're the backup guy. If Hurricane loses, you're the guy we sent out to take out innovation. Who's it going to be? Well, Leenok, Leenok, it looks like it's him. It is in fact him. Leenok. Our first Zerg of the day, and our last Zerg of the day. See what he's got up his sleeve here, the Lean Octopus. Definitely a player they rely on last most of the time when they're in their dire hours. He's made incredible comebacks before. Is he the man that Choi needs today? We're about to find out. Innovation, on the other hand, he's looking very convincing today. Very strong and absolutely confident to take the all kill here. Before we go into the potentially last match of the day, we have another five minute break and as soon as we are back, we will have the match between Innovation and Lena. So guys, stay tuned, we'll be back in a few, get the PSTL.